Welcome to the Black Sprayhood podcast. In this episode, we're talking to Samuel Brathwaite from the Cocoa Growers Association. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity to tell you more about cocoa in Grenada. Thank you. So, Samuel, what can you tell us about the Cocoa Growers Association? Well, the Cocoa Growers Association was formed in um, 1964. It followed the, 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 the Nutmeg Association that was formed in 1947. And what, what, what was happening in Grenada is that the, 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 the people who exported the cocoa made all the money. And the, a lot of the many growers, because there, were, there are three different sectors of growers. There, there's the large growers, there's the medium growers, and there are the small growers. The small growers will have a state between quarter of an acre to five acres. And then the, the medium-sized growers will have will be up to 25 acres, and those that are 25 above it, it will be considered large growers. And just one or two of the large growers were exporting and had a market, and basically they were taking the cocoa from the small growers at a very small price. And the, the, the cocoa farmers was incensed about it, so they, they, they appealed to the government that they can get an association similar to the GCNA and so the government acceded to their request and it, it became entrenched in our constitution that everyone supposed to sell to the, the former single association where all the farmers will sell to that association and the association will do the marketing. The arrangement was, was such that um, the, when they sell to the, to the, to the association those association will sell the products, and any excess will be give back to the farmers as a bonus. So they will just take out the operating expense and pay back, pay the balance to the farmers as a bonus. The, the we in the cocoa association we do we no longer have that bonus system because what we try to do is to give farmers uh, the, the 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 money up front. So we. Right now, farmers getting about 82% in, in every dollar. And that is very, very, very high for, for, for any company to, to, to give its, um, its uh, supply of the raw material, 82%. And how long has Grenada been making the chocolate itself? Well, chocolate is a recent occurrence. Chocolate occur because farmers was clamoring for more money for the cocoa, especially when we, a few, a few years ago, in fact, about 20 years ago, farmers were only making 40 cents per pound for, for, for wet cocoa. Uh, and that is the equivalent of um, 40, a dollar a pound for dry cocoa. They was clamoring for, for, for better prices. And then Hurricane Ivan uh, hit and destroyed a lot of our farms. But uh, basically, the, the, the authorities gave up, gave up on cocoa. But we at the Cocoa Association felt that we can do something better. And we started then, after Hurricane Ivan, uh, to, to, to pay farmers more for the beans so we can bring back the industry. And we met with 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 a with a great measure of success. We um, it, we in fact there we before Hurricane Ivan we are producing about uh, two million pounds of cocoa per year. Um, after Hurricane Ivan, with with less than forty percent of the farmers, we reach one point eight million pounds of cocoa, uh, and only because farmers was getting more for their their, their, their beans. So, um, when they are getting more for the beans, they will, they will pick every pod from the tree. When they are not, when they are not getting much, they will, they, a lot of the pod will remain to rot on the tree. So, uh, we, we have seen a, a rebut, but yet um, with, with the price of um, the, 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 the price of things on, on, the, on the market now, the high prices, they are still clamoring for a better price of the cocoa. And, and so, we felt because uh, we could not get more on the market for our beans, because the, we, in Grenada we get about 
we, 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 we get, um, right now we're getting about 50% more, not 50, about 100% more for our beans on the world market. That's, that's comparable to the world market price. We are fine flavor, we have about the best cocoa in the world, and we are getting a premium that is about 100% of the, of the world market price. And with that, we are able to pay farmer, but yet it's, st it's still not, not sufficient. We, de we decide the only way we can get a, give the farmer more is if we, we manufacture chocolate ourselves. We know we have a very, very good product, and we feel that we can make a very good chocolate from, from our, our, our cocoa. And so we, 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 we with, with, um, with, with our American partner, we opened the Diamond Chocolate Factory. And for the first time uh, in 2021, farmers were able to get a dividend from the ch chocolate factory, which and it was really, really welcome. So that that can add to what they are getting for the cocoa beans. So um, your, this factory, Diamond Factory, is 70% owned by the workers. Yes, seventy percent, not by the workers, by the farmers. By the farmers, sorry. yes, by the farmers. Yeah, uh, and and thirty percent is owned by the American chocolatier, uh, so that um, and th and that relationship ha has really helped us um, because we did not we did not know how to make chocolate, so he brought the technology, he set up the plant, uh, he was able to purchase a number of things for us. Uh, we provided the machinery, the the buildings, and, and everything, and so. And then we provide the beans, so so we are able to get seventy percent of of the share in in that plant. And can you talk us briefly through the chocolate making process? What are the different stages that it has to go through? Well, I, I'm not so much a chocolatier, but I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> um, the process, well, uh, basically we, we make a bean to bar, right? In fact, we we say bean to bar, but it's really tree to bar because. We have the, the, the we have the, the, the diamond chocolate factory uh, is situated on Diamond Estate, right? And we have about three acres of cocoa in, in, in this vicinity. And some of the cocoa here is used for make chocolate making. Um, so basically the, the cocoa will be picked from the tree when the pods are yellow and it's ripe. And it will be fermented in boxes of over 4,000, 5,000 pounds and fermented for, for eight days. Uh, that fermentation process will add flavor and, and many other things to the, 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 co the cocoa. And then it will be dried for seven days. It will be sun dried for seven days. In one of our, this is not the, the biggest plant that we have. Our biggest, in our biggest plant at Moncton, we also have a solar dryer. So because cocoa comes in in the middle of our rain, rainy season, and in the, the, the part when you get the heaviest rain, sometimes there's no sun to dry the cocoa. Uh, so a solar dryer was a very good alternative because we, we, we will, in, in the past, we use uh, burners that use diesel and so on. But uh, we no longer have to do that. We, 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 it's all natural now. It, it will be four days in the sun and, and the next three days. Uh, well, just the next day in the solar dryer and it will be dried. Um, and this is used, when, when, when it's dried, it is, it, it is the, the beans are, uh, are sorted to make sure it's clean. It goes into, it, it is selected to make sure it's sized properly. Then it goes into the roaster. It is roasted, it is winnowed, it is grind, it is refined, it is conch, uh, and then stored in, in, in tanks uh, awaiting the, 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 the tempering process. Uh, and, the, uh, and these are all stages uh, for chocolate making. After being tempered, it will be molded uh, into the bars and so on, and then packaged so that you can have our chocolate and the world can have juve chocolate. And what makes the flavor of Grenadian chocolate so special? It's, 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 it's one, we have, the, 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 there's a lot of history behind us, because for 300 years we've been exporting um, cocoa. Uh, we were the, 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 the biggest exporter to, to, of cocoa at one time, uh, especially to UK. Um, 
So we have three years of 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 the know-how of of doing fine flavor. All our cocoa is fine flavored cocoa, and so because of that, we have our unique flavor. We we have we have our own uh, defined varieties, or, or we call it jump plazas, right? We have eighty of them. That is as part of our Grenada selection, and you could go on the internet and search it. The Grenada selection of cocoa. And and the type of cocoa is Trinitario, so it it, it is it, it is fine flavored cocoa, and it it is said in certain sources that it is the best in the world. I'm not boasting it; is what is what the market says is is a, is a, the best in the world. And so we know because a lot of companies use our chocolate or use our cocoa, right, uh, to do flavoring of their chocolate and uh, and to do specialty chocolate. We felt that in Grenada, we can also give the world a specialty chocolate also, using 100% Grenadian. And in, in this way, uh, when, when you taste the, co the cocoa, you can taste the best of Grenada. When it is a chocolate, sorry, you can taste the best of Grenada. You should taste it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so you said that um, exporting the beans doesn't make very much money, but you, you do continue to export the beans so that... Yeah, um... It's, it's important that we our name remain in the market, so um, we would like companies to continue to use our, our cocoa. In fact, um, we are only using a small portion in Grenada to make our chocolates. So we still open to the world for, for beans for those who like to use our beans in, in chocolate making. Okay, and you said that uh, growing the beans um, near different other types of trees can affect the flavors. Yeah, it is said that. Um, okay, I'll just jump to our next product. Yeah? In Grenada, um, often when there are honey shows in London and so on, um, we, we Grenada normally come first with, with the taste of the honey because of the the, the, the the fauna, because of the different variety of trees. Cocoa is a is a tree that, that needs shades and it is shaded with a number of things. It's shaded with a nutmeg. It, nutmeg is a companion crop. So all throughout our cocoa farms there, there will be nutmeg as a as a companion crop crop. Nutmeg is, is, is a more beneficial plant uh, because the cost of it is much more. But they, so some people say that they can taste without even putting nutmeg into the cocoa. People can taste the, the nutmeg flavors. And then we have we, it will be planted with citrus and many other other spices, with cinnamon and and many other spices. So, so, so this the people it, it is claimed that you can taste these from all cocoa. And what are the ambitions for the future of chocolate making in Grenada? You want to expand? Um, it it is important in, in my view, and I'm just giving my my view on this. It is important that we. As a, as a country, we 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 we, we look to expand our, our chocolate making because the thing is, uh, producing cocoa is 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 natural to us now, and we know we have the competitive edge in because we our cocoa have the flavors and the taste and 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 frankly we can do as as a producer we can give uh, companies flavors that they are looking for. If you are looking for a specialty flavor, we can produce that for you, right? So be because of that, um, we think that uh, if many, we, ha we have much more companies producing chocolate in Grenada, it will be a target for chocolate lovers around the world. Grenada will be a must-stop area because of the flavors, because of the fauna, because of the different type of chocolates. And the, and. Again, we have a lot of tropical fruits. We have the mango, we have plums, we have um, uh, different type of bananas. We can merge all these things with, with our chocolate to, to, to really make a tropical chocolate. You, um, in your former life, or in your, young, in your youth, yeah. you were part of um, Grenada's new dual movement that brought about the, the revolution, the independence revolution in Grenada in 1979. What was your role in that? Well, um, as a... As a young person, I, I, I try to be um, what, what we call progressive in our country. 
And there was this movement where we are against corruption, <clears throat> against um, exploitation of, of people. We did, we did not see um, we did not see so much uh, racism, but we, we, we felt it, it was not so much racism, but it is a class war because. And so we, we, we fought in Grenada for the benefit of the people. And the new dual movement, that is what they were speaking about. So, so that, that basically, uh, as, as a young person, it, it really, it, it, it really uh, adhered to the, our outlook as young people. So we went into, we, we joined, I joined the, the New Jewel Movement uh, before 1979. I became a member. And then in 1979, there was a, the overthrowing of the Gary government. And it took power. And then I was drafted in into um, one of the, the security units. And I spent the rest of my life in the revolution in, in that department. And, and I can see it now. I was I spent I spent about a year in 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 in, in Russia, um, basically training in communism. Um, the the thing is that the ideals of communism I I, I, I can understand um, uh, fighting and living for the benefit of of everyone. We, uh, the, the communist theology says, let those who labor hold the rein, um, except that it was godless. And for me, uh, later on, I, I realized that I cannot be part of an organization that, that is godless because I had a Christian upbringing. Um, so, I, during the revolution, we, 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 we achieved many things. Um, one... Well, we are in the heart of the of the mango season now, and we can see a lot of mango fruits just spoiling. Even with even with with choice table mangoes, um, they, we still have a lot of spoiling. I, I estimate that we only use about twenty five to thirty percent of all the mangoes in Grenada. The rest just fall from the tree and spoil. During the revolution, it, there was none of that. We we were very early into making. Um, um, products with, with, with the thing we were making mango nectars etc and it was it was it was an exciting time because we were using all the fruits we were making uh, using all our plums and uh, all our golden apples but today uh, sadly we, we no longer do that um, the the working class basically had a say the, the common man had a say in, in what we do as a country in so much that to, to reduce the cost of, of, of running the country, uh, the villagers used to clean their own village, uh, clean the side of the streets and, and clean the drains themselves. Uh, today, it is, it, it, is a, it, it is a job that uh, it is a job that given to, to, to people who work for two hours and, and as a support structure for political parties. Um, and in, in, in addition, in addition, they, they started a, a, a number of things. They started a national transportation system uh, that was working very well. They started the, the marketing and national importing board. Uh, the revolution started a, a pension scheme called the national insurance scheme. So there's a lot of activities. We are doing a lot of things. We, they, they were building a new international airport. In, in, before that, there, there was one small airport. Um, and there was a lot of other things that, that, that we were doing. But sadly, uh, in 1983, all that, the revolution crashed because there was infighting in, 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 the, in the party. And it led to the, the um, killing of the leadership and some members of the, the, the party. And then the American invaded, and that which ended the whole process. So you said you told us earlier that uh, it was a revolution that everybody was participating in, that everybody wanted. What what was that you? But you also spoke of some of the dangers, the risks that you were taking at the time. What were the risks that you were taking to your safety? 
again, I, I, I was part of the security, yeah? and I, I suppose we did not know too much about our enemy, and and things were taken for granted. For for instance, as, as a young man, I, I will walk in the day, and yet in the night I will be security guard in, in such an institution to make sure that everything goes well. Um, and then, I, then, then later on, I became I myself were, were, were I was armed. Well, I was armed to the teeth. Um, going going to check to make sure that that each one of the the stations, the, the guards are are okay and and they are up and and so on. So I was working night and day, and many of the many of the the the, 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 the party the comrades are. Uh, party members were doing the same thing. They were, they were working very, very hard. And they reach a time when uh, you can only do that for so long. And many of the guys were falling sick. And because of that, uh, that sparked a big debate within the party. And that, be, that debate kind of escalated because it was felt that the, 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 the leadership was not doing sufficient. That's, that, that's Morris Bishop was not doing sufficient to broaden the party so that other people can be involved. And, and then, um, then uh, in a debate, they said, well, well, you know, we, what we'll do, we'll, we'll make Bernard Code a joint leader, leader. And this did not go down well with members of the party. And because that did not go down well as members of the party, uh, they were in fighting start. And, it was felt that Morris Bishop basically was mobilizing forces outside of Grenada. And it, I'm saying it was felt, I do not know if it's true or not, it was felt so in one of his trips abroad, when he returned to Grenada, he was placed under house arrest. And, and that sparked a whole cry among the general population to free him. And on the day he was freed, um, the, he, he unfortunately they went to uh, uh, one of the the, 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 the army headquarters they took, took over the headquarters and fighting broke out there he was he was not killed in the fighting but the 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 next faction the code faction basically used the opportunity to to, to execute them the, in, the American intervened to stop bloodshed and to protect the citizens but for some of us, we felt it's an invasion. So, just to, to please both sides, we will call it an intervention. So, one of the other things I wanted to ask you about was. Um, Sorry, I said the word incorrectly. It's an intervasion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Intervasion. Yeah. So, um, you, the New Dual Movement got support from, from Cuba at the time. To what extent did you, at the time, feel you were part of a Pan-American movement? Well, um, we felt that we were part of a Pan-American freedom movement, um, and headed by Cuba, because at, at that time, in Chile, there was the Allende government, in, um, in Venezuela, also, there was Maduro, um, uh, not, there's an next guy Chavez. named Chavez. Chavez. Um, in in Guyana, there was also oh gosh, what's the guy named now? There was also a guy who was he was killed in Jamaica. There was Trevor. Um, there was a, the, in fact, in the whole of the Caribbean, there, there, there was there was socialist movement who was looking for the for freedom and and Grenada is an English speaking Caribbean country. Whereas you had Spanish-speaking countries that uh, went the way of socialism, uh, Grenada was the first English-speaking country that went that way, and and that was a big threat to to to, to America and, and to U, uh, UK and so on. So now we have a people, a socialist country that is is speaking English and that can that they can easily speak to the world, and and, and they were scared about that. Again. <coughs> Morris Bishop was, was a very good orator. And because of that, when he speak, people listen. And, and that had a lot of the country uh, shaking. In fact, um, 
Morris Bishop many times when he when he spoke, he spoke for 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 the, the basically the third world, and even large countries, he was he was speaking for them because because he was a very good orator. Um, whereas Fidel, who will speak for them also, but, but because it's Spanish, they felt that, and he was not heard as as much as saying, and then. And, and, and then he was branded as communist, but Grenada wasn't branded as communist or socialist as yet. So when Maurice Bishop spoke, he spoke about freedom for, for these countries. And that was a threat to, 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 to a lot of the, the countries. And because of that, um, plans was made uh, to, to silence him. And then, then they got a very good opportunity when, when we had infighting. And basically, that ended it for everybody. So, how did Grenadian people feel when it all ended? Well, because because Morris Bishop was killed, um, many Grenadians felt that uh, welcome the Americans coming here. Whereas many of them was against the, them coming, but a, a, a lot of Grenadians welcomed him because. Because the, the grenade and the person who they supported was Morris Bishop, and he was killed. So, uh, for them, with the death of Morris Bishop, they saw the end of the, the revolution. And then, um, what's been the legacy, the longer term legacy of the revolution in Grenada? Um, the, in, in Grenada, a, a, a number of things that, that was done by the revolution still remain. Uh, today, we still have the national. Uh, marketing importing board uh, but it is it's just a shadow of itself of, of, of the intentions uh, the, the thing that is that is going best is is the national insurance scheme uh, and that that is going very very strong and the the, the in terms of the agro processing uh, sadly um, the equipment was uh, was sold off to our next country um, and because and today a lot of the the mangoes and so on is left to spoil, left to rot. Uh, every year, um, hundreds of tons of of these fruits will just be wasted. Um, in in terms of education, we we were able to continue. We, we taste in, for for us. We tasted higher education. Uh, because before the revolution, only one or two persons went on to university and so on. Um, today, basically, all young young people look forward to going on to, to further studies in universities, and and that that's certainly a legacy. You might say we we live in a modern world, but it's certainly a legacy of the revolution. Yeah, and you you've got an election coming up this month, and the current government is like a centre right conservative party. You've yeah. got a centre left opposition. How were they, how were they influenced by the, the legacies of the revolution and the invasion? In my analysis, sir, uh, I, I think both of the, the parties stand the same position, stand in the same position. I think both of them are centre right, uh, and none of them are not really left. Uh, they're more centre right. Uh, but the, uh, the, the 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 main opposition uh, it, it consists of a lot of young people. It's it's good to see. Uh, um, young people for the first time saying this is our future and we want to, to take control of our future. Like in, the, in the past, most of the, the, the person who will be running will be, the average age will be around 50, 55 years, but now we have young people in their 30s um, taking part, maybe some of them just are coming off the 20s. So I think it's, it's a step in the right direction, for, for especially for our young people. Because the way they see the future will be different to the way the, 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 the adults and the older people see it. So I, I think it's beneficial for our country. I hope that uh, the party can get substantial foothold in, in, in government, if not for, form the next government, but get sub, substantial foothold so they will gain much needed experience. So Cuba is obviously you know, a country that managed to preserve it, its resolution. Um, what do you think of the way things have gone in Cuba? And do you think Grenada would have followed a similar or a different path if the revolution had been preserved here? Well, I, I do not know what part 
um, you see it's still it's still um, it, we, we can never really know what part what was exact part we, we, we would have followed I know that um, some persons wanted to follow a strict path similar to Cuba and maybe uh, even a communist path and some people they, they wanted benefit for the workers but they did not want a very strict socialist uh, part so you see in a revolution you'll have all these things um, it, it takes time in terms of the leadership wh which direction they want to go uh, which direction would be beneficial for to us as a people and sadly that the, the revolution had to end as it did, but um, in my point of view, uh, because I'm, um, you see, I, I cannot say I'm a Marxist. In fact, I, I I'm not a Marxist. In this, I I I got the opportunity to read the Bible. We can we we can we can achieve all of that, and without sin. And sin means selfishness. Sin means uh, one of a, one person pro projecting themselves above others. But no, we let us help one another. Uh, that I I can I can now speak to other persons in terms of our outlooking Grenada about what we want for 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 our cocoa what for for our cocoa farmers, what we what where we think our country can go, and I think we can do a lot in terms of because we have the forest we have um we, we have the soil I, I think uh, we, we are blessed with the rich soil and I, i'll just give you a quick story just to end you know when 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 the french came to grenada they fought the the the, the caribou caribou was the one living in grenada and the Caribs were doing something uncharacteristic in Grenada. Car the Caribs were nomads and they were fishermen and hunters, right? Uh, some, some, some part of the history will say they were headhunters. But I'm not sure about that. Uh, because part of my, 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 my four parents were Carib. Uh, but, but they were doing something un uncharacteristic in Grenada. They were farming. And they were farming tobacco. In Grenada, the tobacco leaves were bigger than everywhere else in the world. And when the French came to Grenada, they saw that the, the tobacco leaves were bigger than anywhere, anywhere else. In and the taste was even better than the Cubans. Right? And they fought the, and I believe this is what they fought the, the carib for. And they started, the, the first set of products that was coming from Grenada were tobacco. When the English uh, got hold of Grenada, what they did, the, the English said, we, because the Spanish had, had, had cocoa. The English did not have cocoa. The Spanish were keeping it under wraps. So they decided to plan where well, Trinidad was Spanish and they had cocoa. They said, you know what, there are two things we want from Grenada. There are two things we like. We like to have nutmeg, so we don't we don't have to go to Paris to get it. And we want cocoa. So what they did, they took the map of the world, and they, they, they went wrong halfway around the world to Indonesia and them saw and them places and, and, and they said, hey, it's Grenada, you know. So they, so they brought nutmeg to Grenada, and they brought cocoa to Grenada, and Grenada grew both nutmeg and cocoa and all nutmeg is still known as the best in the world and all cocoa is among, is among the best in the world um, there's a story of one of our ministers one of our past ministers going to Ghana and buying chocolate and the chocolate she, when she went to that store the chocolate was, was reasonably cheap but there was one expensive chocolate and the, the guy did not know she was she was from Grenada, and he, and she, and he asked why this chocolate was so expensive. He said, "You do not know." He said, "This chocolate came from a country called Grenada that produces the best uh, cocoa in the world, <laughs> and and that's why it's, it, it is so expensive." <laughs> 
And she said, man, she was full with pride because she knew it came from our country. Mm. We, we do have a know in, 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 in producing our, our, our cocoa. We have the know in our, with, with, our, with our nutmeg. And so we, all, we strive to, to give the, 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 the world the best nutmeg, the best cocoa. And we are striving to give them the best chocolate. Mm. No, I can definitely affirm that that's true. Delicious. Thank you so much, Samuel. Thanks very much, and it's a pleasure. Thank you.